Happy Halloween, everybody. Um, happy Samhain to uh, pagans in the Northern Hemisphere. And happy Beltane to pagans in the Southern Hemisphere. If you want to know what all that's about, that sounds like gobbledygook, uh, check out my video on the origins of Halloween. I think it's called the, something like the real origins of Halloween. Uh, so, uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm wanting to, I, I like Halloween, um, and often it's been a, uh, kind of interestingly, it's been a, um, an area where professionally, um, you know, things have got a little bit more uh, busy, because uh, I used to run ghost tours and things like that, so we always used to do special events at, at Halloween. Uh, got a video about that as well, if you want to check that one out, and by, quite by chance, I've got my skull, this is my Covid mask, so I pull, my, pull this out, I don't get on with normal masks, so. Um, I didn't actually put that on today consciously, but it kind of very fitting for, for Halloween. Uh, so I <laughs> I thought it would be good. I've been wanting to do this anyway. I revisited uh, my old series on ghosts and did another episode of that, which hope you hope you got to watch and enjoy. It uh, came out recently, so please have a watch of that. Um, <clears throat> and then I was going to do another episode of a seri another series I did way back on spirit possession. Because uh, there's something that I thought I left out, but I just had to listen to it, and I, and I, I didn't leave it out. But I know more about the particular aspect of it now than I did then, so uh, I thought it'd be good to to talk about that. So, but what I really, I guess, um, would be good to do is kind of relaunch uh, that series because uh, I made it back when I, you know, didn't have many subscribers, didn't have a lot of uh, people looking at the channel, um, and it's one of my favourite series actually, and, and I think I've got. Um, um, I don't want to sound big-headed, but I think in in some ways it's a it's a broader exploration of that subject than you're likely to get anywhere else. Um, not because I'm uh, more knowledgeable um, or clever or anything like that, but just because I tend to I always look at subjects you know from a very broad perspective. Um, and most people that kind of get interested in a, in a subject like that tend to kind of have a, uh, a particular opinion that they're coming from or a particular religious view that they're coming from or uh, a particular angle and they, they don't explore all the angles. So I think it's, you know, if you, if you kind of, uh, if you have a, uh, an inquiring mind and you like to think about things and you think, well, so like with spirit possession phenomena, something's going on. Uh, so in my series I've explored kind of, you know, all the, uh, a lot of psychological conditions and uh, non-psychological medical kind of conditions that might look like that. Uh, I've looked at it in different cultures, I've looked at different kinds of possession. Um, so I think it's a damn good series, really. It's really badly shot, like all my videos are. Um, at one point I got the camera upside down, um, but I thought that was kind of appropriate in terms of kind of things like spinning heads. Um, but I, I'm kind of, you know, wanting to kind of, uh, you know, uh, get some more love really for some of these older series. So, um, so this is kind of like a, a like a relaunch video really, and I'm going to put a link below to. So what I'll probably do is put a link to the first one. Um, but the best way to find it is to look on my playlist, and that will give you um, all of the videos. So there's seven parts uh, there. Um, so. Um, what I wanted to uh, revisit, really, but for if you're watching this, it's probably be you're watching this for the first time. I alluded uh, in I think episode seven to uh, a Jungian perspective on uh, spirit possession phenomena, um, and this is something I found out more about kind of very recently. And I, I've touched upon it in a more most recent ghost video. And actually, I made a mistake of saying, oh, if you've if you watch that one, don't watch this forthcoming one that I'm going to do because it's the same thing. But actually, I was I was getting a little bit confused. It's actually quite different, but um, there is a similarity. So stay with us, even if you've watched that one. Okay. So <clears throat> Jungian um, Jungian philosophy um, holds with uh, something called archetypes or archetypes, as uh, our American cousins like to call them. Um, so uh, archetypes are um, kind of, 
I mean, I explained it in a previous video, so I want to kind of, um, but I think it is, it's worthy of explanation now. I want to see if I can kind of maybe uh, describe it in a, in a new and exciting and colourful way. I mean, it's Halloween tonight. Well, that's why I'm doing this video, as you know. Um, and I'm parked outside a uh, supermarket, um, as I often am doing these videos, uh, and watching all the people coming past in different fancy dress at the moment, which is kind of cool. So there's, uh, there's a charge just walking past with kind of like um, horns and bat wings. Um, and then mum, I think, has got um, a dinosaur hoodie on, something like that. It's quite, it's quite cool. Um, so archetypes, yeah. I want to let me challenge myself to kind of give a uh, a slightly different uh, interpretation of archetypes. Um, so let's come at it from a different position. Let's come at it from a position of kind of fiction and literature. So if you look at uh, you know books, films, uh, all art forms, uh, you know visual arts, stuff like that, you you will tend to see a repetition of certain kinds of character. Um, so, and Star Wars maybe is a good one to, to, to talk about because uh, Star Wars is full of this kind of stuff. Star Wars is full of kind of union archetypes. Um, so, uh, so one of the um, one of the, the classic archetypes in Star Wars is uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, the wise old man. You know, and that kind of character presents itself over and over and again in in mythology, in literature, in art. Uh, we're coming to our dreams. You know, again, people have visions along along these lines. Um, the wise old man that uh, lives in a cave. So in, in the case of this, he doesn't live in a cave, but he lives in you know, uh, he lives in a dwelling. You know, isolated dwelling out in the desert, and he's a hermit. You know, so the holy hermit, the wise person, is an archetype. Um, and what Jung realised was that these kind of images, um, characters. Uh, occur again and again and again and particularly in ancient mythology but not only just uh, one kind he looked a lot at Greek mythology but not just in Greek mythology and mythology from all over the world the same kind of uh, characters uh, would present themselves so the uh, the arch uh, the, and they he called them archetypes which means kind of arch types so if you think stereotype that's probably the best way to understand archetypes on a simple level so you know you get certain uh, characters in TV and drama that are stereotypes because they're um, and so it's not just in TV and drama, but in our own heads, you know, we, we all probably guilty of stereotyping, you know, we, so we think of gay men as, as being a certain way, you know, um, when actually gay men are, you know, of all, you know, a variety of, you know, shapes and sizes and personalities and interests and stuff like that, but there, there will be a kind of a stereotype. There's racial stereotypes, there's um, national stereotypes. Uh, so, for example, you know, if you uh, if you wanted to, and these things are often in cartoon, you know, you find them in ca because cartoon has to kind of um, give a lot of information in maybe just one, you know, one piece of art or one frame. So, um, you know, national stereotypes. So, you know, I imagine that, you know, uh, you know, if you wanted to portray somebody who was French, you know, you would have them in a stripy, uh, stripy sweats sweatshirt, and they'd have a beret, and they'd have a, um, you know kind of be on a bicycle with onions you know um and you know if you look at the the reality of that you know how many french people um for, you know would fit that image um probably none you know probably like one or something um so so archetypes are a bit like stereotypes but stereotypes are things that we kind of build from our experience and from media and from other things but archetypes are things that are, are built into us already okay according to Jung's theory uh, so what Jung uh, realized was that um, or his, his belief was that, that these kind of images um, instantly mean something to um, we all relate to them we all respond to them and um, we will all and often we will create them or present them so if we were uh, to do a piece of art or write a song, you know, uh, or do some poetry, these archetypes might kind of might well appear in that piece of work. And his theory was that they're um, a bit like, you know, we kind of you could say we inherit instinct, you know, um, you know, things from our ancestors that we that we naturally inherit. It's like you know, most of us like sitting by fire, um, probably because around you know that was a survival thing for our ancestors. We like the sound of trickly water, you know, back in uh, back in days when physical survival was more of a need if you were by a trickly water of a spring you knew that you were safe because you had a, a healthy water supply so these things you know are kind of um hardwired uh within us within our minds now quite how they're hardwired and how they're passed on is you know something that we, you could kind of talk about forever probably but his belief was that they're they're all there 
uh, within us, within us all, somewhere or other. Um, and um, we will resonate more with some than others, um, and at different times that might change. And there's an, another um, phenomena uh, which in Jungian uh, psychology is referred to as, it's referred to in two different ways. One is actually called possession, <laughs> um, uh, which kind of makes sense when we explain it. Uh, but it's also referred to as inflation. Now inflation makes it sound like it's to do with the, the price of cheese going up. Uh, but if you think about what inflation means, if you, inf you inflate a balloon, okay. Um, so, um, so a balloon is something that's empty and you fill it up with air, you inflate it with air. Okay, so uh, inflation in Jungian terms is where um, a particular archetype will overwhelm uh, an individual's personality and they will start to present that archetype and manifest that. They'll, they might dress in a certain way, they behave in a certain way, speak in a certain way, um, and they're manifesting that, that archetype. Um, but it's, it's called inflation. It's, it's considered you know, something to be very you know something to be potentially quite dangerous in the not in this, the sense that um you're gonna die um or kill someone but in the sense that um uh, you become quite ungrounded a little bit like a balloon you helium balloon you kind of float float off into a fantasy world uh and you lose your own sort of sense of personality um so it's an imbalance really if you like we've all got all these archetypes within us but if you kind of suddenly start manifesting one uh, so it's interesting. I, I've got a lot of history with the the Druid tradition, and, and really the Druid tradition, um, although it's you know it's equally um, relevant as a as a spiritual path for uh, males and females. I think a lot of that is uh, is the wise man archetype, you know, because you you know it's wearing robes, often holding a staff. Uh, a lot of Druids are beardy. Um, <laughs> Um, and it is about the path of wisdom. It's you know uh, also, also about often withdrawing to ancient places and secluded places and things like that. So, um, so you could, and, that, and it's interesting from from my experiences in the Druid world, I experienced um, people that were wonderful people, incredibly grounded. You know that like you know, they were really solid. Um, people that you just felt an immediate like trust of you know you'd like um very strong you know very uh, down to earth really but you know they believe all kinds of mystical stuff but they'd be very down to earth and and um uh, just, you know like oak trees you know they're fantastic which is interesting because oak trees is all to do with uh, druidry and uh, the other side of it is uh people are completely crazy um, and I met quite a few of those. And if you look at kind of Druid history, it's full of people that were crazy. So uh, if you look up, you know, I Yolo Morganog, uh, and it goes. And if you look at Merlin, Merlin is uh, a, a really strong expression of the wise man archetype. Um, but um, <clears throat> uh, and Merlin is a legend. You know, Merlin probably never really existed. But if he did, he would have. You know, very. He would be very much embraced. Uh, and um, kind of um, what's the word um, seconded <laughs> Requ requisitioned uh, by the by the druid tradition you know the druid you know merlin is is ours you know um, as, as, a, as part of the druid movement um <clears throat> so that that's one example so the crazy <laughs> and i'm not dissing druids here because i've met some fantastic druids um but there are some crazy ones and it could be argued that uh, if you look at it with a, a jungian perspective that what they've done is they've been inflated they've been inflated by the wise man archetype and they've lost their balance in the process whereas actually real druidry and real wisdom is about being balanced i guess so there's an irony there so what's all this got to do with spirit possession marky um well i'm coming to that be patient um so um uh so the, yeah so the other the other term that he uses is, is possession um so Jungian, um and of course the demon you know a demon monster all those things are archetypal images so um so to be uh you know in fact all deities really all de deities demons angels monsters uh they're all archetypal so uh so to for somebody that manifests as being possessed and maybe you know uh speaks in a, a demonic voice and uses you know says claims to be uh a certain demon um that could well be manifesting that archetype um and one thing is really you know doubly interesting about this is 
and this is where it might be worth watching if you haven't the the recent last video I did on ghosts um, is that Jungian theory will actually uh, embrace the possibility of uh, external manifestations of uh, inner psychological um, dynamics um, so and I talked about the other video I actually give a link to uh, a video where someone's experiencing poltergeist phenomena um, and uh, they're looking at it from a Jungian point of view that actually it's a, it's a part of that person uh, sorry so it's an archetype uh, within that person's psyche uh, that is has been trying to kind of pass on an important developmental message to them in the way that the unconscious kind of um, you know sometimes becomes conscious and tries to get our attention and let us know useful things um, and it's doing it in the form of an external uh, projection you know uh, banging and, and knocking in this in this house um, so and what happens with you know stories of demonic phenomena so you get you know um, you get poltergeist phenomena you get external things happening you get you know people levitating you get beds lifting off the floor beds shaking uh, something goes cold things fly around the room you know that that's often associated with accounts of possession um, so in a way you know Jung um, and I say Jungian, I'm not sure if this all comes from Jung himself or from Jungians, you know, so when I say Jungian, it's, it's the, the, the Jungian school of thought. Um, so uh, the Jungian way of thinking could be a complete explanation of your classic um, exorcism presentation that you that you might read about you know from um, stories from priests that have done exorcisms and things like that um, it would be a kind of you know a holistic and complete explanation of that whole phenomenon you could look at it entirely through a Jungian lens um, which is which is really interesting so um, I mean I, I I don't disbelieve uh, I'm very open I'm open to the, the uh, possibility of this uh, this theory, the Union theory, um, and I think it could account for a lot of those um, phenomena. I don't think it would account for all of them because I don't. I know. I think that very seldom. Um, I've said this before in another video, and this is kind of one of the main messages I like to give around demystification: is very seldom does a, a phenomenon have uh, a single cause. You know, often it's you know it's multiple things you know that goes for uh you know uh, kind of paranormal things and things like ufos but also um illness you know the example i give is a headache um you know you've got a headache could be caused by oh i don't know probably thousands of things if not if not more um you know so a headache could be uh you know you, you lots of bright sunlight you know you, um it could be from dehydration it could be from carbon monoxide poisoning it could be from a brain tumor uh it could be from uh being exposed to too much loud noise it could be from stress um it could be from uh you know problems with neck and shoulders you know but they, they all cause a headache um, and i think you know these things you know are no different um I think headache's an example where there's probably more uh, possible explanations. You know, I think that's why it's a good example. I think uh, I don't think there are you know probably thousands of explanations for um, spirit possession phenomena, but you know certainly a good few. Uh, I'm not sure how many I've listed in this video series. So please watch my series. <laughs> um, so I mean, one of the reasons it's broken up into um, shorter bits, um, which is a bit of a, a pain. Uh, is again back in back in the day um, when I had fewer subscribers and view count and all that kind of thing um, I couldn't YouTube wouldn't let me record longer videos so I used to have to kind of uh, keep them really short and then say right see you in part two and then see you in part three and see you in part four so that's why it's a you know it's a seven parter I think it's a, it might even be an eight parter um, so so this really is a plea to uh, to revisit that series revisit the uh, spirit possession uh, series re revisit the um, uh, ghost series um, and then you know have a look because I've got if you like paranormally stuff um, I've done one on UFOs I've done one on anomalous uh, big cats um, I've also done um, some kind of um, 
more specialist series I don't, or I don't think did a video I'm not sure if it's a series but uh, a lot of people on YouTube are kind of making videos about how they think because I'm very interested in narcissism and uh, psychopathy and things like that uh, and lots of people are doing videos saying that uh, narcissism is the same as uh, demonic possession um, and I've done a response video to, to some of that stuff so thank you so much for watching um, please give it a like please give give a like and if you can a comment to, to my other videos um, and I hope you enjoy them I, I think you know it's one of my favorite series that I'm most pleased with production is awful don't let that put you off um, but the content is there it's, it's like a, a sloppily prepared meal but you know the most delicious meal uh, with the finest ingredients but just you know plonked on the plate with no finesse which is me so thank you for watching and Rangi Marie.